Anixia, smartest villain in WoW. Uh, yeah, that, that that sounds like a good one too. We'll wait a second before we t we start it though. Anixia, the smartest villain in Warcraft. WoW lore part one. I'm gonna be honest. If you asked me the smartest villain, I would have never thought Anixia. Like Anix, like really Anixia. Out of all the villains, I would have thought like. You guys hear? You guys hear Kai? He's up from his nap. Hey, buddy, it's okay. It's okay. Who would I have thought was the smartest? Like Illidan or something? I don't know. Malkanis? Malkanis? Uh, Jailer? I don't know. Garrosh? Yeah, I, I'm curious as to why this video is... Sylvanas? Yeah. Nazoth? Yeah, Anixia, really. The smartest WoW villain. Okay, let's see why. Villains in WoW usually all have the same sort of archetype. You know, they're strong badasses that use their brute strength or overwhelming magical power to grab hold of Azeroth. That's a point A to point B plane of attack. But Nixia, she's a different story. The Black Dragon sneaked in the Stormwind, masquerading as a noble, masterfully participating in political subterfuge for years until it was her time to strike. She is a different villain. A villain that plays 4D chess while the rest scramble to find strength. Hmm. Keep your oh, enemies close. Yeah, she's also yeah. a giant dragon with brute strength and overwhelming magical power. Kill the whelps! More dots! Our story begins before Classic. Deathwing tells his two children, Nefarian and Anixia, that they need to secure the Blackrock Mountain, and they agree. Nefarian went to go team up with the Dark Horde, and Anixia disguised herself as Lady Katrina Prestor, a Stormwind noble. From within the Alliance, she used her power and manipulation to restrict the amount of aid being sent to places like the Burning Steps, where her brother had the most control. While this was all going on, Katrina Prestor continued to spread her influence and redirect troops through Elwyn and Stranglethorn instead, which created a massive debt. A debt that would cripple the kingdom's economy. This was the perfect Sounds time familiar. to cause chaos within the city, because Stormwind was just rebuilt by the Stonemasons Guild. These are people that just spent years of their lives making the city with the promise of being paid but when it came time, the nobles of Stormwind's pockets were empty, and they clearly weren't happy about that. And during this time of turmoil, Katrina Prestor played both sides like a fiddle. She convinced the stonemasons that they needed to be paid more than what they were promised, and she convinced the nobles that the craftsmanship of the city was shoddy at best. And I mean, I have to agree with her there. Look at the Dwarven District, there's just like these giant logs floating above the street, and this has to be a safety hazard, right? Well, they never finished because they didn't get paid. The unrest exploded with riots in the streets. The Stonemasons Guild got only a fraction of what was promised, and now they were out for blood. I mean, they don't look that strong, really. They probably the upheaval AOE culminated down. in a death that would change the course of the Alliance forever. <laughs> Queen Tiffin Wren. Varian's wife was struck during the riots and murdered. The King of Stormwind fell into a Great Depression, and Katrina used this to her advantage and continued to manipulate the King all throughout the Third War. But as Varian's relationship with his son grew, her grasp on the King weakened. She needed to think quickly or her master plan would crumble to dust. Varian made the trip to Theramor to talk peace negotiations with Thrall and Jaina, but during the trip, Katrina Prestor hired Defias Brotherhood goons to kidnap the King of Stormwind and take him to the Naga-infested Alkaz Island to perform a ritual that would split him in two. Alkaz Island! That's the island we tried to raid and all died at with Mitch. Oh, okay. One of the Varians would be the weak-willed half that would be subservient to Lady Prestor, and the other half would be the strong-willed Varian that she would kill after the ritual was done. It is done! I have sundered your will! 
Now, by my power, I shall annihilate it. And you will be my creature, body and soul. But wherever that island was, apparently it wasn't as deserted as Anixia thought. You fool! You who dare occupy our island are now prisoners to Morgulatark's oh, squad. Oh, Weevil's here too, right? The dead take no prisoners, Siren! Kill them! During the fight against the Naga, the two variants used it as a distraction to break free from their bonds. Dragonspawn warriors! Shed your human guys! Grab the puling human! He is the one I must have! Destroy the other, and slay the Naga who would bear witness to this knight's work! As you command, mistress! Through the blur of combat, the weak-willed Varian was swatted off the edge, falling into the water below to eventually be kidnapped by the Naga. It was at this point Anixia shedded her human disguise and attempted to burn the remaining Varian alive. But in a brutal display of cunning, he used one of her henchmen as a shield from the flames. Would that really work? I don't know. I feel like that wouldn't really work that well. Onyxia foolishly thought she killed the King of Stormwind and departed. The strong-willed Varian was left to be surrounded by the Naga, but escaped by jumping off into the water but lost his consciousness on impact. This editing is fantastic. This is where we're at in Classic. Varian is missing and assumed dead, and his son, Anduin, is the ruler of Stormwind. But his position is more superficial, since Bolvar and Katrina Prestor are his advisors. During this time, Katrina continued to restrict troops from being sent to places like Westfall, Lakeshire, and Darkshire, and that is a big reason why adventurers, aka our characters, go to those places and solve those problems ourselves. Man, the more but you know, I did not know any of this. Back. Varian returned back to Stormwind. Of course The people he did. were told a ransom was paid to the Defias Brotherhood to get him back. A ransom that was paid by a special tax placed on the citizens. But this Varian was not himself. This weak-willed king seemed infatuated by Katrina and shrugged off any real kingly responsibilities, like dealing with the threats of the Blackrock Orcs and the Dark Iron Dwarves. Wait, did he, did he not remember that Katrina turned into the dragon and tried to kill him? Wait, what? It was Anduin, Varian's son, who was the first to be suspicious that this was not in fact his father. The weak one, so he, she killed the strong one and the weak one still remained. Okay, I thought the weak one was the one that shielded himself, jumped in the water. No? They both lived? Got it, okay. They, they're both alive, okay. Meanwhile, strong-willed Varian washed up on the shores of Duratok. Okay, here we go, here we go. Rude awakening. Nice move. 20 silver on the human. You're on. He's free, Rokul. Pay up. No way. That blood scent will drive it nuts, and that spar won't stop it. The guy's crockbait. So let's raise the bet to four. <clears throat> Rhaegar Earth Fury, an orc shaman, stumbled upon Varian during his fight with the Crocolisk. It was a perfect opportunity to capture another prisoner. After the Crocolisk was slain, it was obvious that Varian had no idea who he was or how he even got there. What's yes, going on? He'd make the perfect combatant in the arena. And so, 
the strong-willed Varian was captured, forced to be a gladiator for the Savage Horde's amusement, unaware of his true identity. This is a lot of actually really critical classic lore that I had no idea about. So this is part one. It was only a 10 minute uh, video. Um, I'm, okay, so there's part two. Okay, yeah, there's probably hella parts to this. I don't know. Cool. Yeah, well, uh, yo, Taylor, thank you for linking that. Tomorrow we'll, we'll hop into part two. That was really good. Do part two, unless you guys want part two right now. All right, let's do it. One of a two-part series. I recommend watching part one, link down below okay, in we the saw description part one. and the comments. Do it. When we left off, Anixius split the King of Stormwind in two separate bodies. Yep. One is the weak-willed Varian, and the other was the strong-willed. The weak-willed one is currently back in Stormwind and being easily manipulated by Anixia, aka Katrina Prestor, while the other Varian was captured to be a gladiator for the Savage Horde. Dope. Without further ado, dope. Let's continue. Dope. This is cool. While being shipped off to Orgrimmar, okay. Varian was introduced to two other gladiators he'd be partners with. Zaryu and Peekaboo. Roll Bear Mantle, oh. a Night Elf Druid gladiator, and Valeria Sangrenar, a Blood Elf who was just sold to Rhaegar to be a combatant. Both of these characters Whoa. have very detailed backgrounds, left. Unbelievable. but for the sake of brevity, Whoa. we'll be focusing on Varian. The reason for them going to Orgrimmar was to train for a special event in the Crimson Ring at Dire Maul. Members of the Alliance and Uppity Elves were a very rare sight in this part of Azeroth, and some of the other combatants despised this band of misfits. Beat it, pink skin. <laughs> With the defeat of the Horde Ruffians, Varian was given the Blademaster Swords, a perfect weapon for the bloodshed to come. Okay. Okay. Rhaegar's trio of misfits were shipped out to Dire Maul, forced to battle it out in the arena in glorious events that would be their life or death. The individual trials began with the first rays of the rising sun. The betting is heavily against Rhaegar's untried team, and with each victory, Rhaegar's purse grew heavier. And the crowd, particularly those who lost their wagers, grew angry. The pink skins facing the Frostmane troll, ha! <laughs> The event culminated in a three versus three battle that would Three surely threes. be the end of the trio's winning streak. By the gods, he's low gosh. No longer was Varian some nameless gladiator. The spectators in the arena named him after Logosh, an ancient wolf spirit known for his ferocity in battle. This Va whole time they don't know this is literally the King of Stormwind. I, got, I have trouble believing that this whole time they didn't pin that together, right? They're, they're just like, oh look, it's a human. Like, no, one, no one noticed was this. was reborn. No smartphones, I guess, yeah. 
Meanwhile, Onyxia continued to spin her web, and members of the Alliance started to notice something was up. In a meeting with Magni Bronzebeard, the fake King of Stormwind, Varian, continued to brush off any worry of the Dark Iron Dwarves or the Blackrock Orcs. Magni was frustrated by this because his own daughter was kidnapped by the Dark Iron, and Varian's refusal to give aid felt like a betrayal. Prince Anduin approached King Magni, telling him that there is something wrong with his father, leading Magni to go on an investigation to see exactly who this mere shade of the former king really was. Logosh and his elven companions eventually broke free from their bonds and adventured on their own. The journeys they go on don't directly relate to Onyxia, so we're going to skip ahead a bit to when Logosh and company ventured to Ironforge. Oh. In Ironforge, they learned that Marshal Windsor, a soldier of Stormwind, traveled to Blackrock Mountain to find evidence of Onyxia's true identity, but was captured, and Logosh and company need to go and rescue And then your Dark Irons attack, torturer. Even so, had I not been injured, I would have slain them all as well. Grab your hammer, Windsor. We're in a hurry. Varian? What? How? At, at this point, does Varian know who he is yet? I don't like it. Like from from last I've heard, he still doesn't know like who he is, right? He he's kind of just he 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 washed up on the shore. The horde took him. He's fighting. He doesn't really know he's the king of Stormwind because his memory is like you know blank or whatever. Is that correct? Yeah. Now with undeniable evidence that Lady Prestor was a black dragon, the true Varian and his group of adventurers delved into Stormwind, oh, sick. putting an end okay. to this black masquerade once and for all. Trumpets? Heralding the return of the king? No! Guards! Arrest them! General Jonathan, seize the arrogant deceiver and the worthless traitors who ride with him! Reginald, you know I cannot let you pass. Marcus, we served together under Turalyon. Do you truly believe I would do harm to our alliance? Lady Prestor is a black dragon, Marcus. I don't know about the man who calls himself Varian, but I swear to you that the warrior who stands beside me is our true king. Hell Arrest yeah. Arrest them, Marcus. I commend it. What are you waiting for? You would not lie. It is as Windsor tells us. Let them pass, and may the light guide your hand. Sick. Guards, okay. the imposter and his retinue dare enter the keep. Stop them! Kill them! One and all! The masquerade is over, Lady Prestor. So is this the Anixia attunement quest line where she turns into the dragon and then like Rav died? Or should we call you by your true Basically, name? Basically, yeah, okay. Oh, Nixia. Rip. You're a useless tool, Varian, and far more trouble than any the human, human I've ever dealt with. Oh, there it is. That dragon is only because you haven't dealt with me. No, that, that only shows how little you know, fool. But I will deal with you now, permanently. The guards that surrounded Anixia revealed their true forms, and an all-out war took place within the throne room. The heroes of the Alliance fought hard, but not all survived. Windsor, you at least will not escape me! The battle raged on, and the two variants attempted to fight each other during the skirmish. In, in WoW, during this questline, are there two variants? I don't remember there being two variants. I don't think that... I, I, I maybe for, just didn't remember. No? Yeah, I don't think there's two variants. Okay, so that's in the comics, but I didn't bring that into WoW. It may be too confusing or something. Just, just Windsor, yeah, okay. Ah, the young prince! So valiant! So vulnerable! He hasn't come back until Wrath in game. Oh, okay, got it. He can't aid you now, child. Neither of them can. And I have a special welcome prepared for you at home. 
We will soon test your mettle and see if you are as much trouble as your maddening sire. And with that, the fight was concluded, and Katrina's true form was revealed. The next phase of attack was obvious. Enter the Den of Anixia, free the Prince of Stormwind, and slay the Broodmother in her own lair. Little time was wasted. The heroes of the Alliance assembled and stormed Anixia's lair with a vengeance. Last-ditch effort, Anixia harnessed her same spell she used to split Varian to annihilate his copies once and for all. The spell, however, had adverse effects. The High King of the Alliance was whole once again, ready to deliver the final blow to the Broodmother. Varian was restored to his former self, Anduin was saved, and the Black Dragon was defeated. Nice. The head of Anixia now hangs at the gates of Stormwind, Big buff. serving as a constant reminder that the Alliance is not a force to be reckoned with. Whoa, whoa, back it up there, Chauncey. So you Dude. might be wondering, um, this doesn't happen in game. Yeah, that's what I was gonna all. say. Yeah. In game, game thing. You're the guy that frees Marshall Windsor. Yeah. You're the guy that marches into the throne room yeah. of Stormwind to reveal Anixia's identity, and you are the person that slays her. Yeah. But uh that that isn't canon. This comic book series actually plays a pretty big role in the future of other comics and WoW's storytelling in general. In an interview with lead writer Mickey Nielsen, he talks about the matter by saying, We learned that when Varian killed Anixia, players had a very visceral reaction to that, because they had gone through those quest lines and they had killed Anixia. Right, and yeah. so it was a response from the players saying, Hey, wait a minute, Varian didn't do that. I did that. Yeah. It felt like they were robbed of that player experience. Yeah. It's safe to assume that the Horde and Nixia questline is canon since it's pretty much a totally separate story that plays a more third person point of view from the events leading up to Nixia's reveal. But a Nixia and Varian's story is a very unique and brilliantly orchestrated tale in the classic era of WoW lore, and it's a style of storytelling that I'd love to see more in the future. Alright, so I'm the King of Stormwind. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. You know. Chat. I'm the king of Stormwind. I. I, I did that quest line. That's me. Classic dude. I don't know, man. Wait. So which one came out? So, it sounds like the canon. We didn't really know what happened. The players did the quest line, and then the the comic books revealing what happened came out later, and then people were like, "Wait, no, that's not what happened." So, what's the resolution here? Yeah, I I don't know. That, that's <laughs> like it's a whole storyline of like, wait a minute, what's the resolution here? I didn't see Varian's ass next to me grinding this. Yeah, exactly. Bad storytelling. I mean, did they just get like bamboozled a little bit? I mean, it, it not like it's not perfect. It goes off the lore just a little bit. It is what it is. I guess that makes sense. Uh, Jinji asked about EU being better than NA. He said. If this is a different time, they'd invade our villages on horseback and kill everyone not fit to work. But this is a new time, so they beat us at video games. Yeah, we'll see how they do uh, at BlizzCon this year, honey. Yeah. That's the thing with Lao of War. There is no reason. Scam story. Solution, don't reconstruct the story. It's good. Too much to ask for otherwise. Huh. Interesting. So there's WoW lore, but the game doesn't always follow it. Am I following that correctly? There's WoW lore, but in the game, we're... we're... Okay. Nice. That's good. 
that's that that that's really good okay cool yo uh taylor thanks for sharing that i didn't i didn't plan to watch both of those but hey man